fine. He was having fun. He won. I don't think he lost a round. You had him losing the first round semantics. I, I like, I just, he should have gotten, uh, if not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not person needs to win by knockout guy. I don't think boxing is about knockouts. I do think that the sport in many ways is about moments. This fight didn't have a moment. And the reason it needed a moment was because you're fighting an overmatched challenger in what is everyone is acknowledging this is a stay busy fight. Every single person. We all know it. We looked at Steve Claggett. We we're like, all right, Teofimo Lopez should beat this dude handily. Steve Claggett is very tough from round one to round 12, from minute one to minute 36. He was basically walking Teofimo Lopez down, coming forward, coming forward, coming forward. He was getting outboxed in the process. He was getting hit a lot, maybe a little too much. But Teofimo Lopez didn't get the stoppage, didn't. Like, like he, he did what he had to do to win, but it's not the performance where if you're calling for all these big fights, like it doesn't make me want to see him versus Terrence Crawford all of a sudden. I just want to see it anyway, because like, I'm, you know, I'm a big boxing nerd or whatever the case may be, if you want to call me that, but like, this doesn't make me any more excited for it. I kind of watch it. And I'm like, all right, like you're the way you fought this fight. You're not going to fight Terrence Crawford like that. <laughs> Terrence Crawford is going to make you look stupid. Like, like, what do you mean? Can I be well, honest? If Teo fought Terrence Bud Crawford today, I think Bud Crawford wins by knockout. Yeah, wins by knockout. If he yeah, be, if he I fights him today at 147, Bud beats him by knockout. And I think it happens under seven after Bud what I just saw. Because Claggett was landing on him. Claggett true. was using his work rate. Now, I thought Teo was landing the more accurate punches, the more power punches, but Claggett was able to land on him. Teo's like was a little fluffed up at the end of this fight. Claggett didn't have that power, but he sure was landing on him. And, you know, he was kind of controlling the distance in this fight as well. Not to take anything away from Teo, because I gave him rounds, you know, two to 12 after I gave Claggett the first one. Yeah. Um, I thought he dominated. However, I just think Teofimo Lopez needed a great finish tonight. I think he needed a knockout. I think he needed a stoppage because I don't want to hear any talk about him fighting Bud Crawford after a performance where you go the distance with Steve Claggett and no disrespect to Steve. He's a fellow Canadian and he was tough as hell. <laughs> he was tough as hell. Like I yes. was impressed props to him because he did not give up. There was times during that fight where he got stunned. He took some big shots but mm -hmm. there's no reason for Teofimo Lopez to be going a distance on a fight that we're all saying is a keep busy fight I'm sorry I do not want to hear any more talk about Teofimo Lopez and Bud Crawford because to me after what I saw tonight that's a fantasy fight you know what no business being in the ring with Bud Crawford after that now if he fights a big name at 140 Maybe a guy that just won the belt, Liam Paro, Devin Haney and him would be a blockbuster fight. If he fights a big name and has a crazy performance, go ahead. Talk about Bud. But not after you went the distance. No disrespect to my fellow Canadian and Steve Claggett. <laughs> Does he just fight down to his competition, Teofimo Lopez? Is this, this what this is? Or fights up to his competition if it's like a Josh Taylor? That's not an excuse. You shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> but... Like, I feel like that's, that's, that could be what this is. And, you know, we got a comment in the chat and please keep them coming. We'll continue to throw them on the screen. We'll throw this one on the screen. VSA Lee's getting, getting a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of airtime today. Tail versus Brian Norman, which this is something that's been discussed uh, throughout the week. Like Brian Norman is the name that has come up a lot. I love uh, that fight. <laughs> this is what we had mentioned of uh, welterweight title fight, 147. And like, cool. I mean, I'm a nerd, so I'm like, oh, because Brian Norman had a sick performance in his last fight. He did. He did. So I'm like, okay, I could be interested in that, but I'd rather see him against a bigger name. You know, we were talking about it's another earlier, theater fight. I'll yeah, say that much. We were talking about earlier because Teofimo Lopez, like, I loved his entrance to beat it. Like he has, <laughs> he has all of the makings to be a superstar. I think he's perfect for boxing. Teo is great for boxing. Like, he has the personality. He has the showmanship. He shouldn't be doing theaters. 
right? Like he should be a bigger attraction. And for that to happen, he needs to fight a bigger name. Like it can't be a Brian Norman. Like if I told one of my friends, yo, he's going to fight Brian Norman. You know, a lot of people would be like, who's Brian Norman? A lot of people. They would say that to me. Which is unfortunate because Brian Norman is good. Yeah. And I actually like, I, like, I, Teofimo Lopez is going to be a big favorite for that fight. Brian Norman Jr. should not be slept on. No, <laughs> not not at <laughs> all. Not... Especially if especially if we have if we have people in the comments saying this, and people are like, "Hey, his his being Teofimo Lopez, his power doesn't translate to 140." And it's like, all right, if we're saying that, then what's going to happen at 147? There are big punchers at welterweight historically and currently. So, like, I, I just the other thing is, and this is my sort of my theory on why Teofimo Lopez isn't as big of a star as he should be is he beat and he started becoming a star like right before the pandemic, but he beat Vasily Lomachenko like peak COVID. Nobody was there. We all watched it. We gathered around, we watched it on TV, but like nobody can go feel the atmosphere, whatever. Like it was a fight in front of basically nobody. Then he loses to George Cambosos and then he just kind of moves up and there's the Pedro Campa fight. There's the Sandor Martin performance where a lot of people thought he probably lost. And it was, do I still got it? And all these different things. So there's been a string of just weird performances. But his star-making performance where he really put it all together. Not the knockouts before that, like Richard Comey and things of that nature. The Lomachenko fight that happened in front of nobody. And I think that's sort of like we haven't seen him fill out an arena yet. It's just been theaters. He's been fighting in five k 6k theaters basically before we get to anything else just because uh listen i have to put this up on the screen thank you one nation there's only one nation you feel me so i appreciate that a uh, friend of the show here i will say this one thing though brian i think the fight to make at 140 pounds is teofimo lopez and devin haney at this point devin haney he doesn't have a loss anymore. But Champion in recess also, yeah, by the way. But we all saw what happened against Ryan Garcia. I'm sorry, but that's always going to stay with him, regardless of the fact that Ryan took steroids. Whatever. We're always going to rem remember, and DAZN will remind him as well, because they're not taking the video off, that that's what happened to <laughs> Devin Haney. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya is not taking that off of there. Um, but we're always going to remember that. And I think at this point, and here's the thing too, like I think we have to give some credit to Steve Claggett because I thought Teo had a good performance and he had moments. I just think Steve Claggett is tough as hell. Agreed. Like he's tough as hell. Like let's give percent. him some credit here, man. So I don't know if it's necessarily that like Teo didn't fight as good. Like he fought well, he swept. If some people think he won every round, I thought he won every round except for one. Um, but I do think at this point, we just need Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez. And then when Ryan Garcia is done, you know, ser serving his suspension, maybe we can get Ryan Garcia and Teofimo Lopez because, like, oh let's let's be serious here. Could you imagine the antics for that? And it's a moneymaker, and it's a big fight. Like, know. Teo needs know. the big fights. Teo needs the big fights. Like, if it's not Devin Haney, then you need to fight. I, I mean, Tank's not coming up to 140 anytime soon, but he needs right. a big name. He needs a big name. So when I take a look at, you know, the 140 pound division, like he wanted to make the fight with uh, your fellow Puerto Rican and Subriel Matias. <laughs> Apparently that fight didn't happen. Um, can't do it now. Yeah, that's that's true. You can't do it now. I think there's a lot of other things that need to happen. Um, Teofimo Lopez and Isaac Cruz. That's a good fight. I'm, I'm sorry. That's a that's a very big fight. Maybe I'm a nerd. Maybe. No, I'm, it maybe is. I'm, that's it is. a big fight. It, this weight class is a mess. Um, like if you're trying to find, there's not a lot of guys at 140 who are, nobody at 140 is perfect. It was, it's what makes the weight class very entertaining because everybody is super flawed. Like Teofimo Lopez, we've seen him have off nights. We know what the formula is to beat an Isak Cruz. Liam Paro, we haven't sort of like developed the formula to beat him yet, but I, I think we all understand like he's not absolutely unbeatable. You know what I mean? And then you have other guys like, I mentioned Ismail Barroso. He's old. Richardson Hitchens. He might might have gotten beat already. Like Arnold Barbosa, Jack Catterall, Regis Prograde. Those last two are going to fight each other. Like this weight class is a fucking mess. 
Um, Isak Cruz also has a pretty like interesting challenge coming up in Rio Valenzuela. Like, I, I think a lot of people are just going to back him to win that fight because it's going to be an action fight. And that's what he does. He knocks people out. But that's not going to be an easy one. Um, ultimately, like this weight class is a mess. I think Isak Cruz is probably the best like type of fight you can get next. It's kind of realistic. But I don't know. Like, are, are PBC and top rank going to come together to make that? I feel like they should. That'd be nice. But... You know, right now, the the fight that PBC and top rank seem to be focused on is Javante, Javante Davis and Vasily Lomachenko, which I, I still, part of me is still like, and I know they're saying this is being talked about. This is the fight people want to see, obviously. Apparently, I'm, it's going to be November. I'm like, still, until it's announced, I'm highly skeptical that it happens, and I'm half expecting Vasily Lomachenko to defend against Raymond Murataya. And Gervonta Davis to fight, you know, somebody fucking else. I hope that's not the case, though. Brian, with what we just saw, though, would you still consider Teofimo Lopez to be elite and the best at 140 pounds? Sure. Just because of what I'm saying about the weight class being a mess. Because who who's better than him? Is Devin Haney better? <laughs> Know, Sorry, know, there's know, some there, there's know, some ridiculous comment. I and I and I had to laugh because it was so funny. Um, Devin, so it worked. Um, yeah. De Devin Haney, Isaac Cruz, like, um, but like who's better than him in the weight class? I would Leon still put, I would still put Tiafimo Lopez at number one. I think I need to see Devin Haney fight again because my last <laughs> impression of him was not the best, despite of what steroids were involved i'm sorry i'm always going to remember it but when i take a look at 140 pounds there has to be a big fight for teofimo lopez there has to be a pay-per-view for teofimo lopez i think he is the best at 140 pounds but now let's get the big fights i don't know if i necessarily want to see you against brian norman i'd rather yeah. see you against a big name and I, if I that's I'd almost rather see him fight the winner of Regis Progre and Jack Catterall than Brian Norman. I would rather him fight Arnold Barbosa Jr. I or Jose Ramirez. I would I would want Jose Ramirez I'm fine with. But look at what we're talking about, right? Like this is this the look at look well, at well, look. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm thinking about like the storylines and like Teofimo <laughs> Lopez's dad and Arnold Barbosa's dad were like beefing. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like being a nerd and thinking but as Barbosa's a journalist. Barbosa's last performance sucked. So, like, I don't think anyone's going to want to see that shit. Um, yeah, like, I, I just, if we're talking about, like, a big fight, the Devin Haney one is the one to make. I don't know if Devin Haney, like, how interested is is he in that, in, in a Teofimo Lopez fight coming off the Ryan Garcia experience? And well, here, who wins that fight also? I think I have to see Devin fight again. But I, I think, think I would still fair. pick... I, I honestly, I think I would still pick Teo. I would still pick Teo to win that fight because I don't know how sus Devin's chin is now. Mm. Those uppercuts that he landed on Claggett, could <laughs> could Devin survive those uppercuts? I don't know. He was setting it up per perfectly. Uh, let's get to some comments, Brian, um, yeah. right now. All right, let's get to this one from Average Joe. Thanks for rocking with us on the late night show. Teo shouldn't call out Crawford no more. I agree with you. I don't think he should. They're about to be two way classes apart. I mean, maybe one if Teofimo Lopez actually does fight Brian. It seems like Brian Norman, like that's the fight that we're going to see next. Like Teofimo, like we're talking about 140 being a mess. And if you're looking at the weight class of 140, it kind of actually makes sense for Teofimo Lopez to move up to welterweight. I'm just not sure like how awesome he's going to be at welterweight. I, I don't think we've seen the power though since Pedro Campa. Yeah, but at the same time, like, if, I, and, if I'm, and I'm not the person that needs the knockout, but I mean, I think one of his greatest assets is his power. And so, if we're not seeing at 140, and then you're going at 147, and you're fighting dudes like Jerron Ennis, that's but that's the only welterweight that I can I can say like, all right, he'd beat Teofimo Lopez like confidently. And I'm not even like super like you know I'm not like I wouldn't bet my life on it. I I would take Boots Ennis in that fight. But welterweight is not a deep weight class right now, the way 140 is. Like, we're talking now, we're promoting Stan Jonas versus Mario Barrios as this big fight that might be a unification now. And it's like, honestly, like, we people shit on Teofimo Lopez. I'm fine with picking him to beat either of those two dudes. I think he could be Brian Norman. I think he could be Connor oh. Penn. 
Well, yeah, I think he beats Connor Ben. I don't sleep on uh, Norman though. I don't. I don't sleep on Brian Norman. Me neither. Me I think neither. that's. I think right. that's a tough fight. I just but think I'm that saying, there's like, no cachet to... behind it. Like yeah. I want the cachet behind it. I want him to come out like he, like some of Teo's entrances right now are like at the top of boxing entrances. Yeah. Like that was hilarious. I loved every bit of it. But th this is the thing. Like we 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 get on Teofimo Lopez's ass, and we just did. Like his performance tonight. Like he, I felt like he should have gotten a stoppage. But at the same time, he's still the best at 140. And if he moved up to welterweight, he would be the second best in the weight class overnight. Like he just would. Like who are you? Who other than Jerron Boots Ennis? And I still think there's actually some people that might take Teofimo Lopez in that, but I wouldn't. Yeah. But who other than Boots are you taking to beat? Teofimo Lopez, confidently, at welterweight, at 147. Not including Terrence Crawford, who's basically going to be at 154 right now. Yeah, There's nobody um, else. Yeah, that's true. But I still want to see him accomplish something massive at 140 in a big fight. I think when he moves up to 147, I think there'd be more cachet behind his name if he had a big fight. Like, I think the whole point of him fighting Steve Claggett was so we could see him Heisman weekend in December against a big name. And I don't think that's Brian Norman. I'm sorry. I don't. Like, at this point, he should have a big fight. So, I mean, for a boxing nerd, that's a big fight. But for Shout, casual, shout out to Brian Norman for landing a big fight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. This is going to be next, you know? All right, let's. let's Brian, let's. Brian Norman is also, like, I mean, we were, right, we were talking about the best guys at welterweight real quick. He's He could be a little bit higher on that list than people think. Given like we were talking about Bam Rodriguez being 24, Brian Norman Jr. is 23 years old. Yeah. He's 26 and old already. Like he hasn't beaten the guys Bam Rodriguez has beaten in terms of the caliber. But like, like I the line is gonna be like Teofimo Lopez minus 800 or some shit, and I'm gonna be like, oh man, like oh, I'm not, I, I don't know about minus 800, but whatever. Yeah, I'm taking a look at 147 right now. It's not the deepest. It's not. Class. We have people. We have people now picking against Teofimo Lopez. Uh like they're picking Stan Jonas. I wouldn't personally. I would not. I like Stan Jonas though, but I. I, I, I think I, he's he's gonna volume punch. He's gonna like you know like Teofimo Lopez is gonna be able to counter and basically do what he did tonight. He won't win every single round, but like, come on. He can All right, beat let's that guy. Let's st let's stay with some comments. So King Ko Teo better stay at one forty. He's not ready. All caps, so you know it's serious. Uh, Jesus, our boy right here. Uh, Teo versus Tank, but Al Heyman won't allow it. <laughs> I don't know if ta that's a blockbuster fight, but I just don't see Tank moving up to one forty anytime soon. Um, he's comfortable at one thirty five, and I want to see the Lomachenko fight. I want I, I want that more. I yeah, I think that's the fight I want the most this year, to be honest with you. Uh, King KO says uh, Tank would hurt Teo. Seriously, by the amount of punches he took tonight, I believe that. But also, it's different fight styles. Like, Claggett, the way he fights, he was fighting on the inside. He was coming forward. Um, Gervonta Tank Davis is so much more calculated, uh, so much more skilled. So it's all about his uh, timing as well. Uh, King KO, I'm going to rock, rock with your... Uh, comments Haney <laughs> trash nobody want to see that <laughs> um i, I would need like to see, to Devin see Haney again we need to see I, Devin Haney again. right yeah that's i agree I, we need to see him again see see where he's <laughs> at i don't think we should see him get sail from lopez right off the bat though all right this is pretty funny dev went to uh, distance I, with a drug cheat nothing to be ashamed of yeah i agree <laughs> mm -hmm. i agree and and you know the decision was relatively close Robin B31, Cruz Lopez is the one I want to see. I, I think Isaac Cruz and Teo is a blockbuster fight. Mm -hmm. um, I think people would eat it up. I, 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 think really, lot, I really think so. I think a lot of people would take Isaac Cruz to win that fight, and I would not. I don't think so because he doesn't know how to cut off the ring. I, but no, you know what was people impressive? People are blinded by that dude's power. But but you know what was so impressive about Teo tonight was like he, he his work rate was crazy. Like we've never seen a work rate like that from Teo Fimo Lopez. Like this was the most punches he's ever thrown in a fight. Um, Steve Claggett brought that up out of him. So um, yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. All right, um, zero. That reminds me of uh, holes. Liam Paro should fight. Teofimo Lopez. I, I like Liam Paro a lot, and I think that's a fight I would be interested in. I wonder how much of a moneymaker that is, um, but but nonetheless, I think Zero actually thinks Teo does another build-up fight. 
which is kind of what you're saying, which I, that's what I think Brian Norman would be. I think that would be another build up fight for a massive fight the year after. I don't know. I, yes, I think Brian Norman would be treated as that and promoted as that. However, he's not Steve Claggett, with all due respect to Steve Claggett. Like Brian Norman is, he's pretty good. Um, I, I, he's pretty good, is what I'll say. Yeah, no, he's really good. Like he's young too. He had a great performance. Like that's, I think that's kind of like a scary fight. It, no, that's, that, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, it's, you know? just, it's one of those where I'm not. I'm, I'm not probably, 100% sure on taking Teo in that fight, to be honest with you. Well, I'm, I'm not because at, of the odds of what they're going to be. It's going to be ridiculous. It's I would be bet so on. juiced to Teo from Lopez. And I, I I wouldn't want to bet on that fight. And I may not. I might not. Jesus, like, I hate to tell you this, <laughs> but I love entrances. Like, they're <laughs> my bag. Like, that's kind of how I fell in love with boxing <laughs> Actually, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, like Mike Tyson's entrances, like that did it for me as a mm-hmm. as a child. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm a wrestling fan, so I love it. You love entrances, right? <laughs> entrances, like I remember when Mike Tyson came out to Red Man Time for some action, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Ever. So I've I've always been into entrances. The DMX intro one is my favorite. <laughs>